So we'll now begin to look at how we can create and manage channels. So you can see that I've got a script open here and I've already read in four images and these are images that I've created purposefully hopefully to make it easier to see what's going on. So I'm going to start by connecting the viewer to this four channel image and we can tell it's a four channel, channel image because if we come in onto the node we can see that the, it's got a red, green, blue and a white uh, bar depicting the alpha channel so we can see that on, uh, on, on, this, uh, on this little graphic and we can see in the screen that we've got ourselves an, a graphic and if we browse the channels we should be able to see that there's data in all four of the channels so if we go to the red we can see there's the red channel the green and this is why I've created these images in this way so they're, they're almost like self-describing the blue and the alpha so there's data in all four of the channels I'll set that back to RGB now by com comparison if we connect this image this is a single channel image. If we actually zoom into this we can see that it's only actually displaying one channel. And we can see that one channel being displayed in the uh, in the display area. And again, if we flick through the channels we can see that there's data in the red channel. But then we come to the green channel, nothing. The blue channel, nothing. And the alpha channel, nothing. So the only data is actually in the red channel. So why is it in the red channel and why is it displaying on the screen as red? Well this is an idiosyncrasy of Nuke. When Nuke sees a one channel image its default behavior is to load it into the first available channel which just happens to be the red channel. It doesn't mean that the image is red, it just uses the channel to store the data. So let's connect the viewer to this image here. Again if we actually move into the image we can see that this has actually got data, this is a two channel image it's got data in the red and the green channel and we can see it up on the, on the screen and again if I look if we if we look at the channels we can see that we've got the RGBA layer and the read node always does this the read node always populates the RGBA layer and it populates it with the channels that it has so in this case it's identified that this is an image coming in with two channels so we should expect to see data on the red channel you can see forward U and on the green channel forward V on the blue channel nothing and on the alpha channel nothing so it's it's got data in these two the first two channels of the RGBA layer so it's the simi similar explanation as before when Nuke sees a two channel image its default behavior is to load the data into the first two available channels which in this case happens to be red followed by green so kind of a way to approach this conceptually is to think of the red channel as channel 1 and the green channel as channel 2 the blue channel as channel 3 and the alpha channel as channel 4. In effect Nuke isn't discerning between them in terms of their color what it's doing is it's using them effectively as a repository to store data. So let's look at how we can move data between layers and channels. Now this can be confusing at first and this is why I've created these images in this way because they are self-documenting and they should help us to see what's going on. So our objective is going to be to move the data into an appropriate channel or layer. So we're going to start with a single channel because this is probably the easiest to understand. So I've got this, I've got this channel over here which is a single channel uh, image called depth. So I'm just going to connect up to that and we can see it displaying on the screen as depth Z. Now you might remember that when we were very first looking at the layers and we went into the other layers we did actually see a depth layer. It is one of the regularly used layers in Nuke and therefore it is actually predefined. But the reason why it's in the other layers is because it doesn't actually have any data in it. And what we're actually going to do here is we're going to actually populate it with data from this image. So at the moment we can see that this uh, that the read node is actually bringing in this channel of data into the RGBA layer and it's populating it into the red channel. So we move data from the RGBA into, into channels um, and we do this uh, uh, using a technique called shuffling and there is a node called the shuffle in the channel tab which we use for this so this is what we're going to use so while I've got this selected I'm going to come into the channel tab and I'm going to choose the shuffle node and we can see it now in the node tree and we can also see the shuffle properties appearing in the uh, in, in the node property properties up here. Now we kind of need to demystify this uh, uh, a little bit so I'm just going to sort of zoom that down so that we can focus on the on the shuffle node. Now the colored squares on the left 
represent the data coming in to the node. So remember that the data comes in on the RGBA channel, on the RGBA layer, sorry, and this is the RGBA layer that they're coming in on. So we can see that data's coming in. Now, effectively, it's enabled all four channels, but the only data that we know is coming in is on the red channel, so that's the only one that's active. And the way that this works is that the shuffle will read down until it finds an active layer, an active channel, sorry, and then it will read across and it will output it in this direction. So it comes down until it finds the uh, it finds the channel, and then it populates it out in this direction. Now we don't want to populate, we don't want to bring it in as RGBA and then output it as RGBA. What we want to do is we want to move the data from this red channel into the depth pass. So we can define that here, we can come into this out, you can see the, the tooltip there saying that this is out. If we go over this one, this is the input. So we're coming here to the output, we're coming down to our other layers and we're choosing the depth. That just went off the screen capture a little bit, but we're choosing the depth. Now some something very specific has now happened in, uh, with the with regards to the the shuffle. You can see now that the the green, the blue, and the alpha have disappeared. It's coming down now. It's read the file and it's recognised that there's only one channel of data in the file and that is in the red channel. And then so it's coming down to it. It identifies it and then it moves across and it outputs it via the Z channel of the depth pass or the depth layer. Sorry. And because we know that there is data in the red channel, then this is why we can see it on the screen here. So if we come back to the layers, we can see now that because it's actually been populated now with some data, the depth layer is actually now displaying in the layers uh, panel and it's actually disappeared out of these other layers. So now it's got data, it actually moves across into the main layers area. So if I actually change the viewer to depth and I set the channel active channel to red, we can now see exactly what the effect of the shuffle node is. We can see that the, that the node is shuffling, it's shuffling the, the red channel from the RGBA layer and it's pushing it out into the Z channel of the depth layer. Now what is this Z channel of the depth layer? Well remember that the these these channels are arbitrary. They don't have to contain red, green, and blue data. They can contain anything. So in this case, the pre the the depth layer has got a, a channel called Z that is predefined. Now we know that there isn't any data in the green channel. So if we were shuffling from the green into the Z, we won't see a thing. And that's because the green channel doesn't contain any data. We know that because we've already investigated it. Similarly, blue similarly the alpha channel. The only place where there's data in this image on, coming in on the RGB of the read node is the red channel and that's why we see it in there. So let's clear this out of the node properties and we'll look at a slightly more complicated uh, version of it. We'll actually connect the viewer up to this two channel image. I'll set these back to the RGBA and to the RGB channel set. So we can see this image is a two cha is a, is a two channel image. We we've already looked at this. We know that there's the forward U on the red channel and the forward V on the green channel. Now again, we're going to select this. We're going to come into the channels and choose a shuffle node. So we know that this has got two channels. Um, so what we need to do this time is that we need to again we're outputting from the RGBA that don't forget that all the read nodes they, they, they're read by default into the RGBA layer and what we're doing is that we're shuffling them out into the well we need to shuffle out the two channels of data so if we come back to our outputs and we take a look at our other layers we've got a predefined layer called forward this is another one that's used regularly I know this is a little bit off the screen capture but if we select this one we can see that this one is already is predefined and there's already space for two channels being defined as being the U channel and the V channel. Again, these are arbitrary. They happen to be coming in on the red and the green channels, but they really don't have to. It's, it's arbitrary. And you can see that it's already flipped it over onto this side. So we can see that the, uh, that the red reads down until it finds the red channel and then it populates it outwards via the U port or the U channel of the forward layer. Similarly, the green, it reads down until it finds that particular channel and then it passes it out in this direction via the V channel of the forward layer. And again, we can look at this in the viewer, so we can set this. You can see now that the forward layer has moved across from the other layers into the main layer set, so we can choose this. 
and we can take a look so in the red channel we know that we're expecting forward u in the green channel we're expecting forward v in the blue channel we're expecting nothing and in the a channel we're expecting nothing so again we've got forward u there but again if we if we actually took took that out and put it into the blue channel we'd see nothing or in the alpha channel we'd see nothing because we don't actually have any data in the blue or the alpha channel however we could flip those around so previously the red channel was being populated into u but now the red channel is populated into v because we flipped those round so hopefully you can see from that that you can actually you do you can actually manipulate these and these are effectively how you would get at the individual passes that are actually populated into these custom channels like the masks layer that you saw before which had got a shadow pass and an occlusion pass and um, and a grunge pass populated into this this is how we would actually get access to these and output them into very specific layer sets so I'll just quickly pop that back so now as, as we would expect the red channel is populating to the forward U and the green channel is populating to the forward V